Hey what's going on everyone, it's Justin here and today I'm very excited to bring you the review of the BlackBerry Priv. It's not only the company's first device running Android in its history, it's also another one of many chances for BlackBerry to prove that they are still relevant in the market today. I remember back in elementary school going into middle school, BlackBerry was by far the most popular smartphone and I had always wanted one at that age. I didn't end up getting one back then, but when the BlackBerry Priv was announced, I was very excited. So I went out and bought one, and this is my first BlackBerry smartphone, and I actually quite like it. I also want to mention one thing however, and the reason why this review is so late is because I wanted to wait until the first software update from BlackBerry before giving my impressions of the device. Normally I wouldn't do this, but being BlackBerry's first Android device and initial reviews emphasizing some performance issues and just some lag in everyday uses, I decided that it would be fair to let it have its first update. Starting with some of the hardware and specs, the BlackBerry Priv features a Snapdragon 808 processor with 3GB of RAM. You've also got a 5.4 inch QHD display and an 18 megapixel rear facing camera along with a 3410 milliamp hour battery. Of course, not to forget its most prominent feature, a full QWERTY keyboard that slides out from the bottom. But there's definitely something missing here if you guys have noticed. A phone that has privacy in its name doesn't have a fingerprint sensor built into the smartphone which I found pretty funny. Especially in 2015 where a majority of the smartphones I reviewed this year did have a fingerprint sensor. The device itself though could be considered pretty big, coming in at 5.79 inches tall, 3 inches wide, and 9.4 millimeters thick. The Priv itself looks pretty awesome in my opinion with the display wrapping around the edges and very simplistic and on the back you have a classic Blackberry look. Nothing too special there but one thing I noticed that I wasn't very impressed about was the fact that the phone itself kind of clicks a little. There's pretty much an air gap in between the back cover and the battery of the smartphone which makes the device not feel as solid as it should be at this very premium price point. The display you'll find on the BlackBerry Priv is a 5.4 inch 1440x2560 resolution Super AMOLED display with a PPI of 540. So in terms of the pixel density and the clarity of the display, it is right up there with stuff like the Samsung Galaxy Note 5, though I notice it isn't as saturated and the colors don't pop as much when compared. It is more of a natural display, but the colors still look amazing. As you notice, it does wrap around the edge a little bit, which at this size I think looks great and BlackBerry has also tried to implement some things to take advantage of the curve as well, which I will show you in the software overview. I actually really enjoyed this display and that is totally to be expected with an AMOLED screen. The color reproduction is very nice and I have to say I really enjoyed consuming media on the BlackBerry Priv and that's not only because of the display. For some reason with the display curving outwards, it seemed a little bit more immersive as well and although I really like devices such as the Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge, it almost felt as if the curve wasted some of the screen real estate on an already considered small display size. But I definitely don't feel that here with the BlackBerry Priv. This device runs Android 5.1.1 Lollipop with some of BlackBerry's features integrated into it as well, so if you're already integrated into the BlackBerry ecosystem or were a fan of it, you're definitely going to like this, paired up with Android. The experience from looking at it is pretty much stock Android, anywhere from the icons to the way it works, really like the visual interface, and personally from my uses I didn't notice any lag whatsoever, so I guess the first update definitely helped. Something that BlackBerry really emphasizes on this smartphone is the security as well as BlackBerry Hub and BBM. From my personal experience, BlackBerry Hub was useful but at the same time just completely confusing. It tries to compile everything into one feed, but for someone who gets a ton of notifications, it seems to kind of confuse you as it doesn't really filter what's important and what's not. The device itself also notifies you to sign up for BBM far too often, assuming that you still use it after all these years. And touching back at that curved display, you can also access some important notifications from sliding the little menu from the side, and you can pick where you want this. I personally found that really handy and something that I'll definitely be using. Going by its name however, the BlackBerry Priv stands for Privilege of Security and Privacy. And by using the DTEK app by BlackBerry, it is sort of a checklist as to how you can maximize the security of your smartphone. And although I will say I really enjoyed the visual interface, it isn't that useful at all. 
I felt right at home using the BlackBerry Priv, and I really enjoyed the visual interface and the things that were integrated in it, except for BlackBerry BBM. So for anyone who used to use BlackBerry and enjoyed the features, but eventually switched over to Android as BlackBerry kind of died out, you'll actually love the interface and combination between BlackBerry's most exclusive features and Android Lollipop, hopefully with the Marshmallow update in the near future. As with every flagship smartphone I tested out this year, the gaming experience on the Priv was great. It was able to handle graphics just fine with no drop frames, and the only thing I would find as an annoyance is the slide out keyboard, which if you tend to fiddle with the corners of the phone might slide out during gameplay. Speaking of the keyboard, I had some friends try out the BlackBerry Priv who have had Blackberries in the past and was told that the keyboard wasn't as good, but it was still decent. Being a first time BlackBerry user, I found it okay to use, but it will definitely take some getting used to. And the main feature of having a actual keyboard is that you won't have to take up any of your screen space. Though I like the idea of a keyboard, I'll most likely be sticking to an on-screen keyboard as that's what I've been used to for the past few years at least. Since I did have an LG Kibo 2 before I purchased my first iPhone. One thing I really love though is that the keyboard also serves as a trackpad and it works anywhere, whether you're in the home screen and just scrolling around between the menus and pages. But where it will be most used I imagine is when you're reading a long article and have to scroll through text and using the trackpad is very handy for that. On paper, the BlackBerry Priv's camera seems pretty impressive. It is an 18 megapixel sensor which has Schneider Optics OIS face detection autofocus, and dual LED flash. It also has an aperture of f2.2. And on the front, you've got a 2 megapixel 720p camera. From looking at the photos, it did a pretty decent job. In well-lit situations, it was able to get a good photograph, but when compared to others, I wouldn't say it was anything impressive. The biggest issues the camera had was exposing the image, which often seemed washed out, and also the white balance. But as you can see in indoor situations where it was well lit and you were able to stop and take a photo, it was able to produce a pretty good image. The front facing camera did a pretty good job in producing colors, but as you would expect at 2 megapixels, it is kind of a potato. Moving on to a 4K video test, I noticed that the optical image stabilization was okay, but not very good as you can see here. The biggest issue though was the white balance. Like the photos in well lit situations, it was able to perform pretty well. But from the fact that the 4K video mode makes the shot extremely cropped and the color accuracy was kind of hit or miss, I wasn't overly impressed in general with the camera of the BlackBerry Priv. Moving to the battery life, you've got a 3410 mAh battery. When I initially turned on and set up the phone for the first time, that 5 minute process took 10% of the battery and I thought I was in for horrible battery life. But after charging it up, I was able to get a full day of battery life out of the smartphone but not anything more than that, so you could say that the battery was okay. Of course you also have the option to use the battery saver mode built into Android. And due to the AMOLED display and its ability to turn off certain pixels, you've got a pretty cool charging animation that allows you to see your battery charging progress on the smartphone at all times while it's plugged in, which I think is pretty awesome. The BlackBerry Priv has a front facing speaker, which I would say sounds mediocre and it is nice that it's facing towards the front, but the sound quality isn't going to blow you away. But other than that, this has been my full review of the BlackBerry Priv, and I had a lot of fun reviewing this phone. Being very excited for it, I was happy that I waited until after the first update, and I personally didn't notice any frustrations aside from the fact that I got a BlackBerry Hub notification or BBM signup notification like every 5 minutes. The device itself performed well, the keyboard came in handy at times, but the camera was kind of underwhelming, and the fact that that back cover clicks and makes the device feel clunky definitely bugs me. Especially because this is amongst the most expensive smartphones on the market with an outright price of $700 in the US. This phone not only had to be perfect and then some, as I'm sure a lot of people have lost faith in BlackBerry as a company over the past few years especially. And with so much competition that has been established over the years with Android devices, it is definitely going to be a tough sell for BlackBerry and 
this might be the end. But believe it or not, the BlackBerry Priv is one of my favorite smartphones of the year. And I think it will appeal to the certain type of customer base, whether it is businessmen or corporate uses. But if you enjoyed this review, be sure to hit that like button as it helps the channel out a bunch. And leave a comment down below as to what you think of the BlackBerry Priv as I'd love to hear. And I'll see you all in the next video.